I went to unmute my mic mic, and I almost clicked clicked stop stop streaming. streaming. The brain is still turning on. on. (laughs) Good morning, (laughs) everyone. everyone. We've got coffee. coffee. Let me have a little sip of that. And we got lots of code to write. I was traveling this week. I went to a family wedding over in the Midwest. And got a little bit of a cold on the way back. But... I think my throat think my will carry, will me, carry through me through the whole stream. The whole stream. We, will see. we will see. Uh, if it, uh, starts, if it starts, getting starts getting too bad, too bad I'll, I'll put on some, put on some jam, jam music, music and we'll do a cozy, we'll do a cozy uh, co-working, uh, co-working stream or something. <laughs> but, uh, but we got uh, a lot of code to write today. today. Uh, lots uh, of fun, um, AI kind of almost like infrastructure stuff. Um, it is October now. We are still planning on getting our demo out this October. Um, probably, um, probably close, close to, the, to end the, month, the end of the month, but, uh, but uh, that's, really that's really exciting. exciting. I'm, 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 in crunch I'm in crunch mode, mode just trying to just get, trying everything, get everything ready, ready for, for everyone, everyone. and, and uh, uh, I think it's going to be really cool, really cool, but there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot, <laughs> there's more, a lot to more to do. We're going to add, We're gonna in, add in, in a few more systems, systems pretty, aggressively, pretty aggressively, maybe this week, maybe this week, and, this week and next week, and then we'll transition into, like, Polish, looking at that new player experience, a lot of UI work on menus, just like, just like, Maybe some bugs fixing, bug fixing, lots of, lots of more polishy more stuff, to, stuff do then. to do then. Um, um, but, but yeah, yeah before we before jump, we jump over, over to Polish, polish and getting ready for that demo that release, oh, you can hope hear me you twice. Hear me All right, thank, All you. Right, thank you. Let me. There we go. I think uh, my webcam was probably also picking up my mic. Is this better? I just reset um, basically everything, like factory reset on my uh, webcam because it's been freezing every week so had to re-add it and redo all those settings so hopefully this is better let me uh just pop on headset and am i twice here seems fine to me hopefully it's it's fine and let me yeah you know we're uh let me get some music going but uh we're going to write some good code today. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Let's jump on over to a coding scene. Let's update our this week's task. AI chains in item generation. Um, lots of cool stuff to be on there. I'll show it off in just a second, but let me um, queue up some music real fast. Alrighty, so we are still working on Elixir Emporium. Big surprise, big surprise. Um, as I said, um, planning on having the demo out this month, so that's going to be really exciting. I'm pretty much going ham on a lot of the uh, crafting stuff that we have left, uh, some of the player controller stuff we have left. Um, a little bit of like tying everything that we've built together. So like one of the things that we'll do today, uh, we have stats in the game and we have items in the game, but there's no connection between those. So obviously items should have some like stat requirements or something that ties in stats, uh, for using them or equipping them or something. Um, we also have skills, uh, we're going to add in, um, tools will generate with a specific skill that they give you XP in when you uh, use that tool. Uh, Basically just taking everything we've built. It's all very debug mode right now. We've got like global data for our codex. We can see a lot of stuff that we shouldn't be able to see. Um, Tying all those systems together and then we're going to kind of switch over to Polish. Uh, you'd love to play the demo. I cannot wait to see you play the demo uh, or hear what you have to think about it. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, let me show off. I have a uh, flowchart here that's actually a good example of what we're going to change today. And we'll jump right into it in a second. Uh, but right now, we have a lot of different ways the items are created in the game. Uh, For example, just like combining them in your inventory, you take an axe, you take a crystal, 
you combine those, you're probably going to get a crystal axe, I would assume. My monitor just went black. All right, we're good. <laughs> uh, you're probably going to get a crystal axe, assuming everything still works. Sure, we got a crystal axe. It, it has a weapon type of weapon, or an item type of weapon. It's got some stats, it's got some descriptions, image, all that. Um, you can also create items at the blacksmith, say like the anvil, uh, the furnace, different workstations effectively. Uh, let's actually just say at a workstation since they all basically craft items. And then lastly, we have uh, items created via harvesting. So for example, if we take this crystal ax and we go use it on a birch tree, um, we are going to basically create a new item in the game for um, what happens when you use a crystal ax on a birch tree. And we got crystal cut birch logs, I suppose. Uh, where are they? Don't even, oh, right. Cleanly cut with a crystal axe. Sure. So yeah, we've got a lot of different ways that you can create items in the game. We did a little bit of work last week or the week before in kind of uh, centralizing that flow for, uh, we have a item creation service now. So all of these different places will uh, use that service to basically generate an item that has a lot of properties. It chains a little bit to also generate an image for that item based on like the name and the description and stuff. So we have like a one step chain here. Very, very simple. Uh, hey Patrick, welcome in. Um, good to have you here. Miro, um, I've actually never used it before, but it's worked pretty well. Um, I've been kind of using it on and off for the last couple weeks. We just for like really basic flow charts. I was doing one for um, just like the game loop originally and what we wanted to expand into with crafting and uh, combat and stuff. But right now I'm using it to visualize our crafting changes that we're going to make today. Um, so as you can see right now, it's a really, really, really simple chain. Something says we want to create an item, usually by giving that item name. And we have one big prompt that generates it, and we have another prompt that generates that image. Uh, yes, it is free. Uh, or at least, I think you can pay for it, but I'm not paying for it. So, free enough, at least. Um, and so today, what we're going to do is basically take... All of this is going to be the same. Uh, we're going to just make chains based on what item type um, uh, we are generating for. So instead of generating this huge, just everything about the item, uh, we're just going to generate some bare minimum stuff like the name, description, and item type. Um, that's also conveniently all we need to make that image. Um, but we're going to break off and do another prompt, um, chaining these prompts. We'll take this output and pass it through to these. Um, and it'll be based on this item type. So for example, if we generate a weapon, as we have here, we have a crystal axe, but it doesn't have like any damage or animation or attack speed, all that stuff that we need specifically for weapons. Um, we're gonna go ahead and build out a prompt to give us all that. If it's a tool, for example, we will generate um, what stat it is associated with. So that we'll know in the game what stat to give XP for when you're using that tool on, say, any object in the world. Um, if it's equipment, we need to know like what slot uh, it equips on, so like your head or your torso or your legs or whatever, uh, and so on. Like consumables have effects. A lot of them have some of these overlapping like affixes and effects and durability and stuff, but um, we're just gonna be working on this, basically breaking out this one shot uh, generation into a big whole chain of prompts and we have more plans for um, stuff to add on on top of these but these are kind of the first step to getting everything working for all the item types that we have so that's what we're gonna do um i am jealous that y'all get to hear this stardew valley music so i want to also throw in my headset Oh, 
as I said earlier, I have a little bit of a cold, so apologies if I sound weird. I'm gonna um, do my best to talk through the whole stream, talk through what I'm working on, but um, we'll see how far I get. I'll be sipping along. Also, welcome in Anthrax. Good to have you here. All right, I think the best, easiest thing to do to start is let's go take a look at our item creation service. Let's figure out where our like entry point is effectively. Um, so that is gonna be up in this nice little singleton script we have. Uh, nice progress bar on the tree. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, there's actually a little bit of um, a mini game that you can play. It's enabled right now. We'll probably lock it behind some sort of progression later, so it's not so overwhelming. Uh, but we're still working on that uh, progress bar with some like other ways to interact with it. Uh, also dealing with a sore throat, but it's because of going to a concert last night. What was the concert? Um, that is both exciting and sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, Anthrax, as you, uh, you, there's like a critical harvest point where you can press space bar and it jumps the bar forward, but there's also this like, uh, almost catch the falling items minigame you get a little bonus item if you uh catch it and not if you miss it uh and the little fun little easter egg with that is you'll notice that these are kind of floating like almost like leaves falling and the rate that they fall and the floatiness is based on the weight of the item when we're generating all this item stats so really, really heavy items will fall like a lot faster and just like straight down. Uh, I guess this is even lighter than, I guess, yeah, it makes sense. A handful of dirt is even lighter than some logs. But uh, I bet if we went over and harvested some stone or something, it'd fall straight down. Uh, just trying to add a little bit more like interactivity. Uh, one thing I really liked in like one of the inspirations uh, like RuneScape is you kind of have this notion where you can either just passively play the game and collect resources. Like if I started cutting down this tree, I could alt tab and go do some stuff for five minutes or something and come back and have a bunch of stuff. But if I wanted to like uh, actively play the game in some way um, here, it's playing almost like this rhythm mini game, which gets harder when your harvest speed goes faster um but you get more resources that way so you're rewarded as like a bonus for interacting with the game but you can kind of passively tune out and collect some stuff if you want uh, i really like that in games um but yeah let's take a look at that item generation service because that's what we're going to be working in mostly today we've got a couple different entry points for um like different ways systems can create items. So um, one is um, creating recipes from ingredients. So if we say like, <laughs> uh, I'll be back to that in a second. Cozy, welcome in. Thank you for redeeming first. Uh, Human, I know that you said first in chat, but... Um, there's a mechanical means for that now, so I'm sorry, Cozy has got first. <laughs> um, do I have a something like a tutorial level for everything? Um, a tutorial island of sorts. You know, I probably will have a tutorial island. Uh, I think for this demo, we're going to just drop people in, but I'm still going back and forth on where we want like the player to start. So maybe we'll put them in like a little tutorial area or a tutorial island. Um, 
but we do have we've got very basic like tutorial pop-ups that show up on the screen the first time you do things like this appears the first time you play the first time you harvest something excuse me you get this pop-up whenever you finish researching and it actually harvests you get something else first time you open your inventory like we have these kind of pop-ups but now we don't have a tutorial area quite yet i think i want to figure out like there's still a few more systems we want to build and we want to have all those in the game so i can kind of hit them all in that tutorial area but that's a really good idea and we probably should have that uh, i didn't know it would do something i would have pressed it well now y'all know now you can uh start fighting for first i suppose Sorry to cause some chaos, um, but congratulations again to Cozy for, for first this week. Um, yes, in terms of this flowchart, this prompt right here, um, we've already been given an item name, and that is basically a direct mapping to what's happening here where we have fill out complete item details in a function we've already been given a item that should already have name description item type um, and some stuff so we fill out the rest of that stuff that's basically what we're going to branch out and do all this in um, so what we're gonna do is basically break this part out into a function that happens beforehand so we can get this stuff done and then we will branch and chain however um, but still still figuring out our entry point here because we want it to work from all of our possible item creation points which some of them give us a name some of us give us an item and so on so I'm just going to poke through this um, file real fast and see what we're working with so we can get kind of a plan. Uh, I also hope you're having a great day, Cozy. Even if you're coming in and causing death matches and chaos. <laughs> Good to have y'all here. Alrighty, so... So we technically right now actually have something more like this where we do chain off and uh, also generate attributes separately. That's in this function. And that we already have our item generated, our description and everything. We're just filling out more stuff on it. Um, so, oops. That's actually over here. It's a good, uh, good emoji you got there, Pat. I, uh, I love using those in other streams too. Uh, am I still doing the Minecraft streams? Yes. Uh, every Wednesday I do Minecraft streams, but I was traveling for a wedding last week, so I didn't have it last week. Actually, everyone on the server was traveling for a wedding because it's Cozy and her siblings, and it was a family wedding. Um, so we'll be back tomorrow for uh, our Minecraft stream. All right, so let's take a look at, so we have create new new recipe from ingredients, which I assume our one reference is just gonna be, yeah, when we combine two items. Uh, and that's going to probably create, a recipe, and then we head on in to fill out complete item details. So that's one entry point, and then I ass I'm gonna assume fill out complete item details is also called from like all of our workstations, which is creating an item, 
and then filling out those details. So it's looking like that's going to be our, our entry point for everything, which is good. At this point, we already have item type. So we can go ahead and uh, branch off that and decide what all other prompts we need to fill stuff out with. And on the other side of that, we have um, wait for item details to be complete. That's where we're going to basically call our like everything is done callback. So we're going to push that back until after all of our uh, other chained prompts are done. So it should be pretty easy to implement, I think. Uh, that's right. How was it? The wedding was really, really cool, actually. It was up in the mountains of Colorado. Uh, very hard to breathe at times because of the altitude. Uh, or maybe just getting a little sick. Who knows? Uh, but it was it was super long. Just everybody having a really good time. It started at like 3. And they had a schedule of like dancing until midnight effectively. So a very, very long wedding, um, but it was fun. I, I always love going to weddings, especially with my, my wifey, because it's always just a good example of everyone being in love, and I dig that. So uh, it's always good times, I think. Uh, How was the food? Um, you know, the food was really good. It was um, uh, jerk chicken... Uh, rice and beans, um, and meat pies. Um, I think they're called meat pies, but basically it's just like breaded meat. That was the MVP. <coughs> and they were so good. They're very like spicy, very bready. Um, that was the MVP for me. The food was actually all made by, um, I think he was the, the uncle, correct me if I'm wrong, Cozy, but basically one guy cooked for everyone at the wedding, which is kind of bonkers. I think he said there was 40 or 50 chickens that he was cooking, and he could only do like 15 at a time doing the jerk chicken stuff, so, uh, oh, it was Cozy's uncle. <laughs> Shout out to Cozy's uncle then. Um, and I think they're called meat pies. I think it's, the, it's like a African thing. Uh, let me, let me put this to rest. Yeah, images. Meat pie. It's not quite like, not like a pie pie. It's more kind of like this. But not quite like the uh, the crispiness. He makes a lot of Caribbean food. Let me see if I can... Caribbean meat pie, maybe? Yeah, I mean, it's not too far from this. It was just a slight... It was more like a square shape. It was really, really good, though. Uh, he is Rastafarian. Um, yeah, it was, it was super good. That was my favorite part. The chicken was good, too. Um... Rice and beans, can't go wrong, but boy howdy, those meat pies, I just wanted a whole plate of those. Um, always wanted to try some meat pies. Um, would recommend anthrax, definitely. Would recommend, comma, anthrax. I, I wouldn't actually recommend anthrax, uh, but the meat pies are really good. <coughs> Uh, you think you've had something similar? It was cafeteria food, so it was ass, but you really can't screw them up. Fair, fair, fair. Um, yeah, now I'm getting hungry. I had some, uh, like, pita-stuffed sausage and cheese before the stream. It was really good. I normally go in hungry, but I'm glad that I ate a little bit beforehand since we're talking about food. But yeah, let's uh, let's rock and roll, I suppose. So we have um, this was our previous setup. Let's go ahead and bring this guy over too, because right now we are also generating these separately. 
Um, and really all we're going to do here is do a switch on the item type, which we already have. And we will call other prompts. We could do it inline since this is already, well, this is an unical routine, I guess. Um, basically, we'll basically take this callback and this method and just call it from the end of whatever chain we end up going down. So to do move the below to, below to the end of the chain. And now we will switch on item dot item type. We're about to be to the fun stuff writing prompts, but we'll set up this flow first. Uh, it's been two years ago, but the girlfriend and I got to go to a Nigerian couple's place the week before Christmas, and that was still to this day some of the best and spiciest food I've ever had. That sounds pretty darn good. Um, I can't really do spicy that much, but sometimes I go in and, uh, oh no, <laughs> sometimes I go in and try it and I die a little bit, but it's delicious. I imagine what you had was fairly similar in heat and flavor. Um, you know, it was probably not that spicy <laughs> because I thought it was spicy. It was probably not that spicy, uh, but uh, I'm sure it was delicious similarly. Uh, that was also the only time I've had ever had oxtail. I don't know about that. <laughs> I would say I'm a little of a I'm a I'm a bit adventurous of an eater sometimes, but I don't know about that. Sure looks like you can see the like spine going through the middle of the tail. Oh um, Patrick, was the oxtail good? I I noticed you said you had it. I don't know if it was good. It's good? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh no. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll believe you. I see Cozy um, clipped me saying I would recommend Anthrax, so that is going to get me on some lists somewhere. Uh, stream is off to a great start today, guys. I will watch that clip after the stream. Cannot wait to feature it on my profile and get people to never watch me again. Uh, or I guess everyone would watch. Who knows? Depends on the type of person. Um, we're just gonna lean into the chaos. We're gonna write some code through the chaos here, if that if that works. It's in your Discord too. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. All right, all right. So easy switch case here. Item type, case, material, and we're just gonna auto generate all these basically. Case, tool, break, weapon, break, equipment, break, consumable, break. Cool. All right, so now we can set up individual prompts for each of these that generates the specific stuff that we need, basically. So we will go ahead and start building those prompts. That's the fun bit. Um, BRB, human, no worries, no worries. Cozy Biscuit out here making death matches and creating mayhem with Antrax. You know, that is, that is classic Cozy. Um, if it's not clear, uh, I said wifey for lifey earlier. Cozy is my wifey. Oh, she said it. Well, I think I said it too. Uh, we are a chaotic couple, and I'm always causing chaos in her streams, so I guess it's fair that uh, she comes in and causes some in mine. Uh, while we're here and on the topic, let me give her a quick little shout out. She streams a lot of cozy games, so the chaos works perfectly. So you will all have permission to go cause as much chaos as you'd like in her streams as well. Um, so enjoy that cozy. 
and I will also be uh, streaming Minecraft with her tomorrow, tomorrow evening. All right, let's make some prompts. This is the fun bit. You did this, Cozy. This this is what you've done. Uh, we are going to go into our crafting system somewhere. Items, crafting, prompts. Cool. So let's go ahead and pick an item type to start with. And I think since we don't have combat in the game yet, it doesn't really make sense to do the weapon type yet. Let's go ahead and start doing the tool type. So for when we are generating a new tool, we at this point of where we're at, we'll have a name, description, item type, and a value. We'll have an image being genera generated. We'll have attributes being generated. <laughs> mm. I think we will actually get rid of the attributes generation because we don't necessarily want it on everything. So we're going to... Move this guy, generate attributes for item into just tool, weapon, equipment, and consumable. And we might merge that into just a singular prompt here. But for now, we've at least just moved these attributes over into these four prompts effectively why is this song so nostalgic what is this from into the thick of it secret of mana yeah that's a game i haven't played in a long time would recommend very good classic rpg All right, let's um, start with our tool. So let's go look at how we are generating attributes for items. Let's go ahead and start making some region item type specific prompts. And we're gonna say public void generate Tool. The ne these names are going to be wild. Um, tool item details. Generate item details for tool. So we will give it our tool item, which we'll just explicitly say is a tool item. Um, and then a callback for when it's done. So in that, we'll generate the affixes that we're already doing with this, but we're gonna move it over into a new prompt. We'll generate durability for it and a related skill. So let's go ahead and just uh, build that prompt. So let's organize things a little bit better and say item details by type. And then let's create a new prompt for tools. All right, fun bits. System message. The fun typing bit, where I turn my micro microphone to my keyboard, rest my voice, and type in silence awkwardly for a good 30 seconds. Enjoy the music.
Would it be possible to request a song? Absolutely. Um, just hit me with uh, what song you want in chat. I'll queue it up next. No worries. Uh, let's also add some example input, example output. Hey. <laughs> uh, so let's say that we, you know what, we should go grab what the actual uh, items look like. So we've got effects here. Here's a good bit of, that's what we'll have at this point. So input, item name, this is for tools. So let's go ahead and use a tool example and we will say fire pickaxe. Um, Anthrax, your uh, link got, I think got eaten by spam. Feel free to just give me the song title or something and I can look it up on Spotify. I don't have my system sounds on, so me, uh, I need to run it through Spotify effectively to uh, not get it in the VOD so I don't get copyrighted stream. Everhood Flower Shop, thank you. does not look like the correct song. Or maybe it is. It is a game OST. Flower Shop. Oh yeah, Everhood. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You got it up next. Add to queue. Awesome. Thanks for the recommendation. I'm excited to hear it. I don't know what's playing now, but it's, it's Bop. <laughs> no idea what it's from. All right, so what are we generating on a fire pickaxe? We need to be creating, uh, we will move over the affixes. We, let's take out the durability because we're going to be adding that here. We'll pull it out of our original prompt. Uh, that's the DS game where you solve detective puzzles. This game? It does sound like a DS game, actually. I don't think I ever played it, but that makes sense based on the album art. And it's fading out now. Let's see Anthrax's song. <laughs> Thank you for the recommendation again. Um, so what we're going to have... Name, description, item type. We'll take out durability, but not until we've actually done that. This is a bop. The attributes you will be adding are so we let's go ahead and just move our so we've got this big prompt for affixes. Maybe we leave this separate so we can keep it nice and thorough and just we'll chain that as well. So we don't necessarily need to do affixes here, but we should say that that's separate just so we can track um, how many prompts we are doing. And so I think with the tool, we also want to, let's say, required skill level to use. I'm not familiar with Everhood. Um, Anthrax. What is that game? This game, I guess. 
Sounds pretty good. Three asterisks, best platform. <laughs> That's where all the cheap viewers are, you know? All right, so if we are given this, we will output item name higher pickaxe. And type tool value, you know what, let's give it a value of like something reasonable and not zero. Weight one, we will give it durability of 40. Related skill mining. I forget what skills we actually have enabled in the game. Let's go look at that. Psychedelic rhythm sort of game. Interesting, interesting. I'm a sucker for a good rhythm game. <laughs> you go around picking fights and dodging the notes people throw at you. That sounds pretty good. All right, so in the game right now, we have alchemy, herblore, woodsman, mining, and smithing. We might run into the case of where, like, one of the kind of map reduce operations that we do with AI is trying to map that, like, infinite creation down to a specific option in a list so we see that a lot with crafting where we don't have a lot of item affixes in the game right now uh, but it tries to add affixes to items we only give it a few options and it it says like okay this one's the nearest so it doesn't necessarily always make the most sense that problem goes away as we add more and more affixes for the ai to choose from um but we might start seeing that a little bit since we have only a few skills in the game. Like a honey axe, I guess, is probably going to get mapped to woodsman maybe. Could be like cooking, who knows. But there's probably items we can create that don't necessarily map to a skill. And I think... We might see that issue, but I think it'll go away as we add more and more skills. And we have a lot more skills like ready to add to the game. I'm just trying not to add too many at once. Um, just because I want them to be nice and fleshed out when we properly enable them. So this is probably fine. We have five for now. And we'll just insert those into the actual prompt. And then have the AI choose um, what... Um, skill is most relevant. Still that guy, Jake. Classic Jake. Welcome on in. Skibbity skill tree. I feel like I wrote that as a joke somewhere as like test dummy data. And now I'm wondering if I accidentally left that in the game somewhere. Did you see that in the game somewhere? Are you just coming in with some, with some chaos? because I might need to go uh, hunt that down and figure out what was supposed to go there. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and this should be fine. All oh, right, we probably also want related skill level requirement, sure. And we'll say like four. Just chaos as always. All right, all right. Because I, I think if we, if you go look at some of the UI windows, like they're all populated with real data when you actually um, load the game. But if you go look at the, the the windows before that data gets loaded in, you have a lot of junk like this. Boring stat, level 42 for every point allocated gain, plus 10 maximum giggity. So I was very curious if you actually saw... Um, skibbity skill tree somewhere and I was just goofing 
Um, so <laughs> good to know it's just chaos. Uh, alrighty, I'm gonna leave a lurk. Playing the new Zelda game now. Ooh, nice. You have to tell me how it is, human. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for popping in, and I'm sure you'll fall asleep soon too. So I'll see you. I'll see you when I see you. Uh, a lot of chaos in the chat today for sure. Um, you know, I could just add a stat super easy called Giggity, and you guys can bring your Giggity over 9,000 as you want. Uh, actually, that's a super cool, like, aspect of making all this, all these systems so modularized. I literally could just add, let's see, I don't even remember where I store the different stats, uh, like the different possible stats, but... I could add Giggity as a stat, which automatically gets inserted in in all the item crafting prompts. So you could create items that have plus five Giggity and equip those, and you could get your Giggity pretty infinite. I think Andrew and I are both really excited for making a few other scenes of like different environments, like sci-fi or horror or something, or like something in a specific time period or location or something and all we do at that point is kind of tag all the metadata on all the objects in the world and it just works with all the crafting system stuff that we've built uh, i think that'll be super cool um but i have forgotten what i was doing <laughs> all right we were writing the tools prompt and we said we were going to skip over the affixes cool 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 um You can also add a giggity command in Twitch to assign people a random percent giggity for the day. All right, I will have that. I will add that. It will be ready for the next stream. That is a brilliant idea, and I will be doing that. So I hope you all are ready to get your giggity levels next time. <laughs> That's such a good idea, actually. Get your giggity up with Elixir 3D. Now that is a good slogan right there. I'm glad everyone is such a good mood today. Um, let's go ahead and we need to say some details about like the values that we need to assign on these. So let's go ahead and say... Uh, range 10 100 related skill possible values we will populate this array um, dynamically based on the skills in the game but for now we're going to hard code it so we can generate some example responses in a second we will say woodsman uh, alchemy, uh, mining, I forget the others. We have, what's enabled, what's enabled? Foraging. Oh, herb war was one. And smithing. All right, we can work with that. Herb lore, smithing. Cool, cool, cool. And required skill level to use, let's say range uh, one. Well, let's see. one and sure 99 uh just change chat channel points to giggity points there's some real good ideas floating around here i may never get first but i will have the highest giggity <laughs> we will see we'll see uh, that reminds me i did turn off one of my channel redeems for um stopping what I'm doing and playing a match of Overwatch. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, well, 
I'll, you know what? I'll turn it back on for the next stream. <laughs> I think we got a lot to do today, but feel free to redeem that anytime too. I, I love the break. Um, cool. So we have what should be a reasonable prompt here, which I'm realizing might be pretty small font on screen. But if we go ahead and give it an example input now and generate our example response, we should get something very similar to the example output because obviously that's the example we gave. But if we change that now to say like the smoldering axe, we can start seeing what skill it assigns it to and what like stat requirements it gives, what durability it gives. Uh, for tools, we should probably actually also generate a um, like a harvest speed, base harvest speed, harvest speed modifier, something that can make some tools harvest faster. Um, we'll get a little bit of that from affixes, but I think we should have something inherent in like the base. Uh, trying to get away with not doing work. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I am not terrible at Overwatch. And, you know, I said it so it's only like once a stream or something. You can just make me play a game, I guess. So, you know, it's it's research. Don't worry about it. Um, I don't mind a distraction. You know, that's how you think of the best stuff. So don't worry about that. Uh, you're saving up to 5k to completely derail the stream and your life with a game jam. I forgot that I added that to a game jam. <laughs> oh boy, I don't even know how many points people get like per stream. I don't know if 5,000 is like, I'm going to be doing a game jam every week or if it's every month, who knows. Uh, I love game jams and we will make that, that dang fishing game one of these times. So I, I'm ready for it. Um, that'll be fun, I think. Uh, let's see. I could do it. I could do it right now. <laughs> it has to be me. Oh, no. Okay, okay. Uh, I have to play a game now. Oh, no. Yes, you guys are... I mean, it's basically already a break. Like, you see how much work I get done when I just constantly am drawn back to chat. Uh, I'm getting a lot done. It's good to sit down and actually do stuff, but you know, if I was heads down not talking to wonderful people in chat, I might do a little bit more, and this is way more fun, so it's a good balance. In the time that I've been coming here, I've amassed only 7k. Okay, okay. But you, yeah, you have been coming out for a while. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, but that's a good, like, baseline to know. Okay. 5K is fine for uh, a game jam. Seems reasonable for me. Uh, so how do we want to do, like, uh, how fast this item harvests? Because we don't want it too ridiculous because we do have like a stat that increases harvest speed but i think it makes sense to like if you have maybe like a super megaton drill item generated it'll probably have a faster like base harvest speed than a fine brush um So we could do like a base harvest speed of range like like 0.7 to 0.3 or like 1.3 or something or right. cuz it's going to be a multiply multiplier on whatever these objects have as their base uh, harvest time. So like this tree takes three seconds to harvest. If you have an item with an affix on it that is 100% faster harvesting, it'll take 1.5 seconds. Do we even need another multipl multiplier on making it faster? Maybe not. Sometimes the real code is the friends we make along the way. 
Couldn't have said it better myself, Cozy. Uh, still that guy, Jake. I don't think it's possible for you to be any less wonderful, so don't worry about that. You're doing great. Uh, I think we're fine without this extra affix. I don't think we want to complicate things just for the sake of complicating things. We have this as an affix already. Let's just leave it. So this seems fine. So with a smoldering axe, this should hopefully give us, say, woodsman as our stat. And, you know, the skill requirement, maybe we want to calculate or... Do something more like contextual based on the actual values and properties of the affixes on the item because this is effectively just giving it a random skill level requirement like nothing in this screams you should be level 22 to use this especially if we haven't even generated the affixes yet so I think that's something we should probably like assign points to affixes and affix values. So like two times harvest speed gives you a certain amount of points, more points than like 1.5 times harvest speed. And then those number of points will all add up into like a required calculated skill level. So I don't think we necessarily need to do that with AI, uh, which is nice because we can do that instantly instead of passing it through an LLM. Um, so let's go ahead and Let's try and generate some items that don't fit into one of these five um, skills that we have. So like a fishing rod, let's say a, a greasy fishing rod. What skill is it going to assign this to? Woodsman. Yeah, like that's the problem with, that we will have until we add a lot of skills. Like, we're telling it to map to one of these five. And sometimes you'll get something that doesn't map correctly. So let me ask you guys, like, would you rather, as a player, would you rather have an item that has, like, a related skill that doesn't really make a lot of sense? Or would you rather have an item that just doesn't have a related skill and, like, doesn't give you XP in anything when you use it? Because, like, a fishing rod, we will have fishing eventually, probably. Um, but you can make that now, and you can use it on anything. Like, what skill do you want to get XP for when you're using that item? That's the question. Like, we can give you a skill that you get XP for when you use that item. But it might not make total sense if we don't have the intended skill in the game yet. Is it, like, if you create a fishing rod... And it says, like, you get Woodsman XP when you use it. Is that weird? Because the alternative is you get no XP. <laughs> or, like, maybe you get a little bit of XP in everything, which I think makes even less sense. Uh, let's try, like, a Magic Staff. Something completely unrelated. Well, it's probably going to be Alchemy. But uh, we're just trying to get a sense of like the quality effectively before we move on to the other problems. Magic Staff gives you alchemy XP. That makes sense. Uh, let's go ahead and also say don't change any existing properties just so that's not changing like the uh, value or weight being passed in. Um, so if we give it like a hammer is probably going to be smithing. Um, wooden boat. What? I mean, and we probably won't get that, I guess. But it gives you woodsman. Sure, like that's close, I guess. Um, I do think it is weird. But I mean, if you have a decent sized list of skills that gets to choose from, it'd be okay. Yeah, like it is definitely weird. And I think a couple weeks ago we had a good, somebody pointed out that like this is the exact type of problem with AI where we have a choice as a designer, like we're using this tool. We have 
personal choice of like, do we want to give a weird result that doesn't make a lot of sense and potentially like throw the player off a little bit and make the player think like, oh, they're not even curating an experience for me. Or do we want to like uh, remove that and just have a little bit less like content or like like in this case you're not getting XP in anything. So in my eyes, it's probably like a dead tool, but maybe it's like a really useful tool that'll give you the items you need. So maybe I could say like none. We can play around with uh tools that aren't associated with a skill and see if they just feel bad that might be a middle ground between like let's say let's say greasy fishing rod again hopefully this gives us none as a related skill okay so in the event that we get none as a related skill on this item, we can just say, like, you don't get any XP for using this item, but we also don't show, like, uh, the UI that would give, like, a skill. Uh, well, in this case, you sh could use the logic without AI for if it's this tool being created, it will always tie into this skill. In this, you could use the logic without AI for if it's this tool being created, it will always tie into this skill. Do you mean like hard coding in like names of tools always associate with a specific skill? Because we could do that as well also. Uh, I've tried to avoid hard coding in much related to names, which we're using as keys in like all our recipes and everything, but it's pretty quickly, it's pretty quick that the player gets to items that um, are weirdly named effectively. But maybe we will, maybe we'll do something different with item, with tools that generate without a related skill. This problem will go away. We have all these skills ready to add to the game. So we could literally take all of these and when they are added to our skill database, uh, well, we have the full skill list. When they're added to the active skills list, we can... Uh, just automatically insert them into this prompt so they'll be chosen correctly. So it will. it is a problem that will go away, I guess. Uh, all fishing rods will always associate with fishing, but obviously I don't know all the ins and outs of the code like you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I think it's, it's just a little hard sometimes to map like all fishing rods when you're talking about like string comparisons. Like obviously you can't hard code in like fiery fishy rod and like things like that but you can you could say like does it include the words fishing rod does it include like this word this word there's a lot of stuff you can do yeah um so that's probably a good approach in some cases i think yeah if we didn't have the uh like the end goal here of adding more skills and it mapping correctly. I think I would go out of my way to do that. But I think I'm just going to bank on us adding skills fast enough that hopefully this isn't a problem later. Um, let's try one or two more examples. Uh, I see what you're saying. Like the tool itself is also being generated. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's like effectively infinite tools already that can be generated. There's only like four or five that even start in the game data. Um, and even some of the tools like chisels and hammers, uh, they only exist in like item templates. So they will Fingers crossed, things look fine. 
I don't know what happened. Thank you for uh, hanging around. Uh, I went around, I thought my internet died because I used to have some really bad mesh network stuff that was terrible and always killed my internet. However, I swapped it all out with Eero. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Pat. I guess you found a loophole, the loophole. Um, Human is uh, going to be double mad now. Um, but yeah, apparently my internet didn't go down. Every other computer and smart thing in my house still works. Just my desktop uh, couldn't reach DH DHCP servers, so I do not know what the deal was with that. I ended up just restarting my desktop, so hopefully whatever messed up in the like Wi-Fi adapter or something is rebooted. I'm going to take one second and make sure that... Uh, Everything is starting back up again. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm also back. You load up Discord. I'll let the, the friends know that I'm back as well. Um, and I'll get that music back on in a second. Basically, we are just recovering. But fingers crossed, things seem fine. Uh, let me go ahead and... Post that back in here. Alrighty. A reboot was all I needed. We're back at... Kill the uh, picture of my face every time. Um, cool. Spotify. Spotify, you're up next. And... Surely, this is all actually just to get me going faster in the code, I guess. Alright, we got music going. We're looking good. Bonus stream. We got double stream today. We got we, too much chaos. We really just uh, overflowed the cup. Really, uh, my turn to add in some chaos, I guess. So, <laughs> thanks everyone for coming on back. I appreciate it a lot. We were absolutely not done with the stream today. Um, good to have you all back. We got a lot more to do. It's always so frustrating when your internet doesn't work. On the bright side, maybe I should knock on some wood for this too, but my camera hasn't frozen this stream. So could be worse um but yeah we are we're part two now we're good to go uh <laughs> i do not use dark mode um uh, i will die on that hill i would much rather have light mode on a dimly lit screen than dark mode in which I feel like I always need to have my screen really brightly lit to see in dark mode. And I very, very often live on a laptop, and so battery life is a premium for me. So dimly lit screen, screen that's how you extend your battery, and light mode is best for that. So I, I, I will not compromise there. Um, <laughs> I will die on that hill. But enough people bullied me to use dark mode in Unity that I now use dark mode in Unity just so people stop telling me to use dark mode in Unity every time I stream. Uh, but, yeah, I guess in, in Discord it is still light mode, which is hilarious every time I send a screenshot to anyone because it's always just commenting that I use light mode. <laughs> But let's see if we can get back into where we were at. Because I think we can knock out this whole system today. There's not actually a lot left to do. We got Terraria music ready to bring us through. We are good to go. Let's see here. We have our tools prompt. We were discussing whether it makes sense to do extra work now to kind of deal with items that don't 
necessarily map to a skill that we have active yet or if we should just have no skill associated. I think no skill, associ no skill associated makes sense for now, but Patrick was look asking, what is the script for a tool? Is it just data in a table or is it an actual game object with data tied into it? It is none of the above. Yes, we, it's basically we have um, an item template class and it can contain tool data, but we don't have the actual data to fill out those tools until the player is playing the game and we generate a blob like this from AI and we deserialize that JSON blob there into an instance of an item template which fills out these properties. So there's no like scriptable objects that we've made for most tools, I think, wooden axe or yeah, uh, no scriptable objects for tools. We are just creating them all on the fly. So that'll bite us in the butt later when we are dealing with like saving and loading because we will need to persist those into something like on the player hard drive uh, so that we can recreate those the next time they play the game to like repopulate all that game data but we are not there yet and that is a problem for me on another day or maybe Andrew <laughs> maybe he loves making saving systems because I certainly don't but one of us will do it um, yeah let's uh, let's hook up this prompt so we will stick that on our item creation service, I think. We don't have any of our previous prompts stored here, but I think it makes sense. Like we have our combining rec combining ingredients prompt on our recipe database. We have uh, generating attributes in the recipe database. That probably makes sense to move over here. Um, so we'll start putting some prompts over here too. Uh, I feel sorry for future Andrew, whichever one it is. I do too, but you know, you can only do so much each day. So present Andrew is going to have a great time today and not be bogged down by sa save systems. Is this the Kingdom Hearts Traverse Town? This is... Lazy Afternoon Kingdom Hearts... Uh, lazy afternoons. Maybe. I have not actually played Kingdom Hearts, but it is one of the most popular songs on this OST, so I'm assuming it's one of the more popular ones. It's called Lazy Afternoons. So let's go ahead and say public prompt tool item data generation. And then we'll also grab our attributes prompt, which is currently generate attributes for item on the recipe database. We'll grab that too. And let's prefix all of these with a prompt. And I guess, yeah, we'll just normalize all the names. Generate tool item data, let's say item data specific to tools. Perfect. And then we can have more of those for weapons, etc. Sorry, it's Twilight Town. It's from the second one. Really good game, wasted too many hours in it, and also drawing my own keyblades. Heck yeah. I think at the same time, uh, or around the same time, Final Fantasy VIII was what I was wasting thousands of hours in. And in that, you don't have keyblades, you have gun blades, which are as silly as they sound. They are literally a sword that you can pull the trigger and it shoots from the end of the sword. Uh, I, I did draw a few of those as well. <laughs> mm. 
All righty. So. We now have our prompt. We have, it will be stored here. So let's say tools. Oof, that's gonna be a pain. You know what, maybe we'll rename these a little bit. Nothing silly about it. Yeah, I love when games have really, really weird, like, weapons. I really liked the, they call it a swallow in Chrono Cross. Um, one of my, my favorite games as a kid. But there's also, like, these discs. Uh, Yeah, this thing was one of my faves as a kid. And, I mean, obviously you got a, a scythe. You can't go wrong with a scythe. I'm trying to find the, the disc that I'm thinking of. Well, Swallow was very cool. And later on you realize, like, it's actually a, a real weapon. Just very, like, specific from some uh, place in the world. And I forget what the real name is, but I love when item when games have those super unique items. All right, so we've brought over some prompts. That lets us, one, say on our generate attributes for item, we can go ahead and steal this. So now it's just generate. Um, generate attributes for item from this class. Let's do a quick search and make sure we're not using it anywhere else. We are not, so then we can go over to our recipe database and delete that. Since we've moved it over to our item creation service where it makes sense. And then we will use our new prompt too. So for a tool, We want to avoid fill out uh, item with type specific data. We'll make it generic. So we've got our item and we have our prompt, type specific prompt. And we'll have a callback for when it's done. This might actually be mostly correct. Because we will go ahead and just do like, uh, fill out item with type specific data for the item and then our prompt tool data and this callback that we're gonna yoink over. But we do want to have a few more things that we add in. Um, I love it when there's things that couldn't possibly exist in our world that are just everyday normal things and the game world makes you believe it. Yes. Um, there's a term for that in uh, literature. I forget the term. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a, like, when it's grounded in reality and something is just very, very different, but it nobody pretends that it's different in that world. I do love that. Okay, so this is not actually the callback we need. Let's go ahead and just make that empty for now. But what we want to include in this system prompt is let's say possible skill names 
as a token and we can say player database dot instance dot active skills dot map dot how do we convert those to a list of strings? What are they? List of skill, which has a display name dot map, right? What's the link map? How do I link map? each skills display name. I think the GMTK guy said that in one of his videos that immersion isn't realism. It's not letting the player see the edge of the simulation or some such. Immersion isn't realism. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a cool way to think about it. I mean, there's... There's a lot of tricks behind the scenes that uh, you start learning about in games, like uh, just like unloading the things behind you that you can't see. They just don't exist behind the player and they load back in when they turn around. I think it's super cool to, to kind of see games like that. I, I dig that phrase. Uh, oh, it's just select. Okay. So let's add that in. Can we... Can we insert that? Do I need to write it manually? And we need to, oh, we have a link, okay. So that's gonna select it and we just join by commas, surely. String dot join separator goes first, then values. All right, so that will give us all of our skills get mapped to just the skill names. So then we'll get a list of skill names that will substitute in this token there. And here we also append none. Can we do that this way? What are you airing it about? In parentheses expected. One, open, open, close. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Speaking of GMTK, I absolutely loved the last video they put out about Metroid Brainias. I don't think I saw that yet. I'm gonna have to check that out. I was just watching, um, I don't think it was Mark Brown, but a uh, similar vein, how to make games mysterious. And they were talking about like the, uh, the dragons in Breath of the Wild being in the sky and like the player has to go seek them out, but they're gone by the time they get there. Uh, there's a lot of really cool tricks in that video that I saw. Maybe I'll share it on Discord after the stream. I'm going to have to check out the GMTK video too. Oh, that is the video. Okay, okay. Nice. Well, I guess I saw it. It was a good video. All right. Is there anything else that we need to include in this prompt for tools? Ah, uh, yes, the actual item, so serialized item, instead of passing in a specific item, we'll use this. Um, we have a durability range that doesn't really need hard-coded. This should be fine. So now we need to think about, like, flow, because we have two different coroutines that we're spawning here when we're generating an item. We have one to generate uh, like the related skill details and we have one for generating the affixes and we don't want the item to count as done generating which is what this function does until both of them are done. 
Um, so a couple ways we could go about that are like tracking the coroutines and determining when they are both completed. Like we could have these functions return that coroutine, have both here, and then wait for them both to be done. Um, we could also have some sort of coroutine that just watches all of the item data and waits for it to be filled out. I don't think that's the right approach because you can't really guarantee that everything will be filled out, so you might be waiting forever on some of that. We'll probably track those coroutines, but I think I'll ask one of our Discord sages about it in a second. Um, I loved it so much after watching it the first time I went back and wrote three pages of notes out of it. Nice. I've always wanted to tackle making a game that's along the same vein. Hoping to add some of it to the current game as well. I feel like those videos are always just so dang inspiring. Like, every time I see one of those, I do... I don't write. <laughs> uh, I'll show this window where I literally... I have hundreds and hundreds of tabs and also... Uh, they're mostly on different desktops, but also dozens and dozens of windows where I just write down quick little notes while watching uh, videos like that. And then I have days where I just go through and convert them all into actual proper notes, turn them into like GitHub issues and stuff. But I use tabs as a to-do list and um, it's a terrible system. <laughs> oh. I played Outer Wilds, which I have almost beaten, but I need to play Tunic for market research. I've heard Tunic is awesome. I've heard Outer Wilds is not that awesome. I uh, haven't played either, though. I've got to play both. I think I'm more inclined to play Tunic, though. Uh, Tunic's great. I want to play so bad. Got to head to dinner. Okay, okay. There will probably just be chaos while you're gone, so don't worry about that, Anthrax. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with us. Tabs are life, and having hundreds and hundreds of tabs is a sign that you're doing good things, probably, hopefully. So, don't worry about that. I currently have about 20 tabs open right now as well. I got music tab, school tab, this tab, they're all hoarders. Yes, yes, yes. I absolutely am a hoarder. I don't think I can actually uh, switch desktops on OBS, but... Uh, maybe I can. Okay. Well, you know, I did just restart my computer, so I need to recover a lot of tabs probably later. But normally, this uh, Windows tab screen instead of Alt tab gives you all your workstations, all your windows and stuff. I learned that that actually scrolls when you have enough windows open. Also, I guess you don't see my second monitor on these workstations either, but it's plenty of tabs as well. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of good stuff. So go eat your dinner and stop shaving our tab habits. You got to keep notes somewhere. You know, when you're watching a video, it's just a quick little control T, write a little note, and then you tab back to that tab you were watching. All right. So let's, speaking of tabbing over, let's do this. I want to see... Um, also, shout out to our Discord if you're not in it. There's Unity Sages, Unreal Sages, etc. You can ask questions. Uh, I'm going to ask... Um, I have this code below that spawns two different coroutines. Uh, what's the best way to wait until they are both done and then call a callback? Uh, we'll see if that gives us anything because I think we'll just need to like treat it like threads effectively and wait for them both to complete and then we can just have each of these return the coroutine that they're starting, which we can do, but I want to see if there's something better. Uh, you can use coroutine handles, mono behavior method that waits for both of them. Sure, sure, sure. So...
wait for coroutines. Yeah, so it's just going to have a reference to each of those coroutines. Wait for that one to be done, wait for that one to be done, and then call that callback. That's exactly what I was going to do, but without all the spoiler plate. But, all right, that's fine. Uh, thank you for linking the Discord, Patrick. We're good to go. Also, welcome on in, Tony. We are building great things. We were full of chaos earlier, and then the chaos got out of hand, and it destroyed my computer, so we're down a few mans now, but we're doing great. We are going to see if we can get this working with just tools first. So let's say this guy it's going to actually return an I enumerator, which I think this returns an I enumerator, does it not? Oh, it returns a coroutine. That's fine. All right, so we can return our coroutine that also has our baked in callback here. But I think. The chaos has decided to simmer down for now. Uh, we do need um, a generic processor for the generated item that we're creating here. So it's going to be like this, and we need to serialize that data into an item. So we will say serialized item and we want to say load serialized data into item. So item and string serialized data. And so here, instead of doing some stuff, we're going to just load serialized item into data. All right, we do need that syntax. We can say we pass our item through and also our serialized item data. So we actually want, I don't know if this will actually clobber the item. I don't think so but we want to like loop over all of the item properties and copy this into them, which it's kind of doing here, but that's not exactly what we want. We want to copy all item properties from deserialized item into item. And there could be some, oh, that's nice. There could be some times when we like, you can kind of branch here, right, of like, do you want to overwrite existing properties or do you want to just fill in empty properties? I think we can, oh, it doesn't exist. I think we can just always overwrite because the way we've structured our prompts is that we shouldn't be changing things. It's not like we're either changing things or only providing diffs. We're basically producing the whole item data each time. Maybe we should be providing diffs, but uh, I think what we can do is say like, we'll figure that out in a sec. Uh, you should play some Slime Rancher soundtracks at some point. The music reminds me of this. I'm into it. I think I actually started playing Slime Ra Rancher once um, and I liked it a lot. I think I played it on Xbox Game Pass though, which I was just streaming to my PC, so I didn't have it for long. So let's go ahead and uh, probably stream for another hour or two. Why not knock out an hour and a half album? Uh, add to queue after this song. Probably good to go for a while. We got stuff to do. All right, so how, what's the best way for us to do this? We could do all the item properties manually, and like copy over each one kind of the way that it was doing it. I really don't want to do that. 
like this, we could have name, item type, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because it's generic and we want to use this for all the types. But I feel like that really sets us up for bugs later, where if we add a property to an item, we also would need to go through and like add a line for it here. I want to use some sort of like meta programming to just get all the properties on an item if we can. Um, one, two, three, one, two. So, alternatively, we could also pass through the properties we're expecting as another parameter through each of these. So, like, we know that. we know what properties we're adding in each prompt. You know, actually, since we are producing the whole item each time and we are overriding everything, we can literally just not do the copy. Let's just say item is, and it's now that. Now the question becomes, is this a Is the scope of this item going to be just this method? Or will it actually change the properties underneath? I'm not actually sure. I feel like there's, there's a good chance that we might... Uh, this isn't actually going to work because it'll just set this variable like a local instance of it to this property or to what we're passing in. And then as soon as the function ends, it'll go back to the old item, but oh well, we'll find out. Um, cool, 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 cool. So let's see if this works, I guess. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint here. So we know that this works. And then I'm also going to, I mean, we're not ready to quite test it yet, but I'm also gonna put a breakpoint here, which has a reference to the item. So when we do test it, we can make sure that this gets set with all the new properties correctly. And then when we leave this function and return here, we can look at this item and make sure it's still properly set as well. So we don't revert stuff, but we need to do what AI told us to do here. Um, we basically just need to probably make a coroutine that we a single coroutine that we spawn from here that spins off all of these other coroutines that need done and then waits for each of them to be done before it returns so let's kind of mock that out here we'll say private i enumerator fill all tool data item and callback. So that is going to fill out item with tool spec with type specific data using the prompt tool data prompt and also generate the attributes. So this will just be a start coroutine for fill all tool data and we pass through our callback here that we are passing along. So we're still planning to remove this. We're just trying to get everything done beforehand and it's multiple steps now. So we're just managing that they're all done instead of just easy chain of do this, then the, this, then the, do this. Uh, so here, Fill out item with type specific data is just going to give us a coroutine of uh, type data coroutine. Not the greatest name. Let's say type specific generation coroutine. So we're also keeping it uh, mostly generic. Although I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll need multiple of these functions. 
Um, and then we'll also have one for this guy, which I'm trying to remember why I wrapped all these to only generate attributes if they didn't already have attributes. Because we shouldn't be in this like generation phase. Also, I'm liking this music a lot. Uh, we shouldn't be in this generation phase for a new item. Or for an item that doesn't have attributes already. All this code only runs when we're generating an item for the first time. So it was probably a like race, well, I feel like the reason was that we have empty array as a value and we're using null as like, this hasn't been generated yet. So that tells me that we just need better management of what has and what hasn't been generated. So we're going to go all in and just remove that and fix whatever problems arise. So we will say attributes generation coroutine is that. And that guy is going to return himself, or at least the coroutine it starts. So now we have both coroutines that need done for this tool to be fully filled out. Now we say wait for both coroutines to be complete. We're just yielding each, which I think matches. Yield return. Yeah, I mean we start them up here, but it's the same thing. And then when they're done, call the on item completed callback. So this is our callback that we pass through to the item generation service saying like, hey, I need you to create this item, do whatever you need to do, but whenever it's done, call this function. And so that's what we're passing around within this service. And since we have multiple steps now, we are just waiting until all those steps are done. And then we're calling that original, like basically an entry point back to whatever called the service in the first place saying, hey, your item is done. Here you go. Do whatever you need with it. And we pass that item back. So this is a lot nicer and it will be nice that we can add other steps as well. We could also make dependent steps. So like if we add another prompt that depended on the attributes, we can put it down here and then wait for it. So it's very um, sequential, which is really nice. Um, I'm realizing that this function as written is going to need to be repeated with each item type. And so I'm wondering if there's a a nice way to just pass through as like a parameter of like if we called this fill all item data, the tool version of it would need this and this passed through. The weapon version would need this and uh, and also this, but with a different prompt. Like we could pass through the stuff and make it super generic, but um, probably is fine to just repeat this effectively for now until we at least know the pattern. So what we can do, let's, we will just leave it on tools to start though, because we want to make sure it's all working before we do all the branches. But I think this is everything that we need. Let's go ahead and we have a break in this one. Attributes is going to be fine. This guy has a callback, but we're not going to be using it. This guy also has a callback, which we also don't need to be using. We just want the stuff done and then we'll call a single callback at the end.
So I think this will work, and the way that we'll tell that it works is if we set a breakpoint here, we should be able to see durability and related skill set on the item, which we won't because we don't have those here. So let's go ahead and say public string related skill name We need this variable to match whatever key we use in the LLM, just so it serializes back correctly. But we want it to be a proper skill class, but it is just the name we're using here. We don't want to serialize the whole skill. So I think what we'll do is have related skill here, but have like a public skill get related skill or something like that where we just return the, yeah, that. But it's gonna be related skills dot find whatever. do it. So now when we deserialize item data into an actual item in the game, it'll take that item name, set it in related skill, and then we'll be able to get the actual skill by calling this, which will use that related skill. Okay, let's see if this works. Because <laughs> I'm not thousand percent sure that it will, but I believe that all of this stream chaos has entitled us to one free, it just works. And we're gonna try and do our best out there. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'm a little suspicious that both times my internet has died has been the exact moment that I uh, make an API request <laughs> at the Anvil. Uh, I'm sure that I'm back now. Um, I'm gonna just throw in a little bit more chaos by redeeming first myself this time because I feel like I deserve it at this point. Uh, welcome back, we'll see how long we go. I don't know what's going on here. Um, we're going to walk over and we're going to try and make an aluminum hoe. And if that knocks our internet out again, I think we have bigger problems. Surely it's not like... I know that my my mesh network, my Eero devices, like, updated the other day. And surely they don't have, like, some sort of security thing that's like flagging requests and being like oh man this man is uh being hacked or something we better shut down the device uh but if we make an aluminum hoe which i'm not going to click yet i do first want to attach to unity which i think i can do while we're already playing although maybe not all right, let's set this up. I think I am back though. Um, <laughs> fingers crossed, knock on wood, etc., etc. Everything is still very frozen. What's going on? Unity is using 11 gig of RAM. I'm gonna restart Unity real fast because <laughs> definitely some weird stuff happening. Some of my windows are just black screens 
until I mouse over them. Let's let's just pray that this is all just the Unity gods being like, hey, you can't make that demo. And this is us overcoming them. <laughs> also, <laughs> welcome back in, Patrick. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get first next time, so no worries, no worries. Um, I believe, surely this will just work. Surely. Alright, we're going to attach to Unity. We're going to play. If I can get back to Unity. Why does it not... I mean, I would think that maybe we had a breakpoint somewhere in, like, editor stuff, but... Tick global callbacks. But when I stop attaching to Unity, Unity is just fine. Kind of. And now Visual Studio is frozen. What is going on? Okay. I mean, it's still... Debugging is stopped, but not yet complete. Stop now. Okay. Welcome to this Unity is crazy stream. Uh, we might write code someday, but might not be today. All right, so Unity is still a little laggy, but fine. Visual Studio is fine. If I make sure I'm not like recording extra stuff in the profiler, I just attach to Unity. Okay, things are fine. We are attached. We're going to go walk over and try and make a tool. BRB pad, no worries, no worries. I'm sure we'll be figuring stuff out still when you return. But we are... <laughs> okay, okay. So we have the weirdest bug, I think. So I'm fairly certain what is killing my internet is using that anvil. And as soon as I click out of play mode in Unity, my internet comes back. We're going to try that again. I apologize. This is a science stream now. Um, so the internet seems fine. We'll give it a few seconds, I guess. Seems fine. Let me just, like, go double check that in Twitch, I guess. Um, alright, alright. So we are going to... We are still attached to Unity. Let's reattach, just to be sure. Um... You have returned. Excellent, excellent. We are just giving giving the stream a moment to make sure that it is stable because we're going to exercise whatever demon is in this code because I'm fairly certain every time I craft this aluminum hoe at the anvil. <laughs> Congratulations on first anthrax. Every time I craft an aluminum hoe at this anvil, my internet goes out. And then it stays out until I, until I leave play mode in Unity. And then it immediately comes back. So we're going to give that a shot. I'm, st I'm still going to wait like another minute of just like... I mean, that's all we've tried to craft. And I might try... Another, yeah, I'll try another item in just a minute. I want to run around for a little bit, make sure, like, the stream seems stable. Because it does seem now three times in a... Well, Unity has frozen. 
Uh, well, three times in a row now I've tried to craft an item, and that's immediately when the internet dies. Yeah, okay. So, internet did die without us creating an item. But we did do the same, like, we we hit a break point in Unity, and it pumped us over to Visual Studio for, like, different code. And that did also kill the stream. I wonder if it's just, like... Either Unity or Visual Studio is using a lot of resources and OBS can't keep up. It's... And we're not pegged on anything. Wi Fi seems fine. Yeah, this is definitely a science stream now. We're just trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Uh, we'll be back to code if we can figure it out. But, you know, if it just keeps crashing and uh, it we can't figure it out, then we may end up just, uh, you know, uh, working offline. And I'll do another bonus stream or something another day and make it up. Um, so we're attached to Unity here. I'm going to run around a little bit. It seems like every... I thought it was every time we... That's... It's so silly. Alright. Um, so... There's definitely something wrong. <laughs> Stream keeps dying sometime during play mode. And it keeps coming back as soon as I exit play mode. I have no idea why. Um, so I think all that's left to do is to, I mean, we were going to test that the code we wrote works. We can't really test that if, I mean, sure seems like something in play mode is like killing our internet. Something is cursed. We can try and write some more code and see if the internet goes out. But it does seem so immediate. Like, when I do a few things in the game, my internet immediately dies, and then when I exit out of play mode, my internet immediately comes back. I have no idea why that is the case. But maybe I'll write a little bit more code outside of play mode, just see if the internet dies that way. And we can test it all together later, because it's all going to be mostly the same. So what we can do is... Say private i enumerator fill all material data. We can just set up all of these uh, flows for all the other item types as well, and then we don't necessarily need to go over and specifically get a material or a tool crafted. Uh, we can just handle everything. So let's go ahead and... Do that. So we're going to need more prompts for all the different item types. So I'm going to just assume that my internet is good now. And <laughs> that is a, a big assumption, but YOLO. It's probably going to be fine. Um, we'll see if anyone's still around. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, but let's get these other item details by type prompts done. So we will have one for material. And what do we need to generate for that? Basically nothing. We will have stuff later, but for now, nothing. So let's actually remove that one. And so we also want weapon, we'll do that. 
And so each of these we're just basically going to specify the values that we're adding. So weapons also get durability, weapons also get damage, attacks per second, or maybe just attack speed, and we'll say give it a little bit of a range there. Just a very small range that we'll extrapolate out. Um, what else did we need on weapons? We need damage type, I suppose. So let's add that in as well. Doesn't do anything right now. Obviously, we're going to add combat later, later, or later. But uh, it's fun to get these affixes in now so we can at least see like what it will be. Um, and we will say possible values and just give it a few like physical, fire, cold, lightning. And so now when we say fire battle axe, item type of weapon, we'll give it some examples of We've got damage, 8, attack speed, 0.8, and damage type, physical. So it knows it's a string. Cool. So that'll work. Let's go save that. Let's get all these in. So we've got public prompt prompt uh, equipment and consumable of the other two so let's also do equipment on equipment we have Lot a, a valid. What did we call? What was the phrasing? We have possible values, possible values. Possible values. Head, neck, body, legs. I think we have feet as well and ring. Uh, let's say accessory. So what else are we generating for equipment? We have durability stat requirements. That's uh, another fun one we'll add. So those we will have both a skill and a level requirement which gets us into the territory of figuring out how we provide like scale context to these items that we're generating because you kind of see it works when you have a closed range, like dur durability, where you have, it's not really dependent on anything else. All items are between 10 and 100 durability, and you could roll that as like a random number, um, but passing it through the LLM gives you a little bit more, like if you generate an item that's like low quality shield, it's gonna have a lower durability because of the definition of the name. But if you have like superior shield, it's going to have more. Um, stat requirements, though, they 
the LLM doesn't really know the context of like what is a low stat, what is a high stat, medium stat. I mean, we could even abstract that out to say things like um, dexterity high. Uh, like we could put in low, medium, high and convert those two numbers based on the range of values that we actually have in the game. Um, and that gives the LLM more context into like, does this specific item need low, medium or high stats instead of having to choose like, oh, it's actually 42. Oh, that's way too high. Maybe like four is really high. Um, we could also just give them like ranges of zero to a hundred, but that doesn't really make sense when stats can be infinitely scaling. You don't have that upper bound anymore but you don't want items just generating with, like if I say dexterity can have a range of one to 10,000 because there is no bounds, then the AI assumes like that's a normal range and it might generate like, oh, this needs a thousand dexterity and the player has like three. <laughs> so alternatively, if we say like, one in a hundred dexterity, which is probably a normal range. Once you get up into those like higher level items, it's going to be really hard to bust out of that like 100 dexterity range. And we're talking about requirements here, but it also applies to like plus this amount of dexterity. Um, it's hard to craft items that are better than that when the AI is capping it but maybe there's going to be ways around it. Maybe we can set a soft cap like this and just say 100 is a max for requirements or like plus some amount. And if the player figures out a way to generate items around that, that's great. So Let's write a little bit about the format of stat requirements, and I will tilt my mic down on my keyboard for this. That's probably fine. I was actually going to write like the actual format out, but I think we can infer it from our example output. So let's go ahead and say um, horned helmet, item type equipment, Give it slot head stat requirements array of objects, or we could do tuples too. Let's see, we could do something like dexterity five or we could do like uh, stat dexterity required five I don't know if there's a benefit to either I feel like this second one gives a little bit more room for the LLM to like make up other stats that would be in the object but it is a little clearer as to what the the scalar value there is for. But I think it's fine like this. 
let's go ahead and say strength just for our example um, and then we also want to have a hey Tej, welcome on in I'm doing good we've had so much uh, stream issues today I'm just chilling now either the stream is gonna go out or it's not <laughs> But we've had a lot of good fun so far. Lots of people popping in. Thanks for coming on in. Hope you're having a great day, too. Um, uh, fun fact, I'm pretty sure every time that we play the game, my computer's internet crashes. And as soon as I exit play mode, my internet comes back. So I don't know what to make of that. So we're basically just writing a bunch of code now and not testing that it works at all. And once it's all done, I'm going to go into play mode and test it all. But realistically, I'm going to go into play mode and then my stream is going to cut out. And I'll be like, all right, I'm going to go play some Overwatch or something. Uh, so hopefully this is going to all work. No pressure, but, uh, you know, we're just... Uh, we're taking our item generation, which we have some fancy flowcharts. Used to be very simple, just like take an item name, generate some stuff about it, and now we are uh, basically branching off of, we're doing some of that and then determining what type of item it is to kind of branch out and have different AIs do different things to populate the item data. So, you know, getting all those, those branches done and uh, just realized I hope my audio or my my Spotify is still coming through on stream so it's not just me typing in silence <laughs> but uh yeah we're just vibing looks like Spotify is okay cool 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 uh but yeah welcome on in thanks for thanks for popping by <laughs> um cool so equipment should be set up I think that's all we need stat requirements we could even give equipment a different like a second example input output of like multiple stat requirements but i think it's fine um but we do need to add some of these new affixes to the item class now uh, item cs so that's gonna need public string slot and public Duple string int stat requirements. I think that'll serialize correctly from this to that. We will find out. Um, yeah, and we'll need to organize a lot of these a lot better. We may end up needing to add them to the item template as well, but I don't think so because the template is like for our scriptable objects that the game starts with and they all convert to items at the beginning of the game and we create new items as the player plays so let's just add some headers real quick just to keep these a little bit more um, organized but it's not really going to work when for example effects is on tools and equipment <laughs> not the greatest way to organize all this but we will do what we can for now. What are you complaining about? Ah, yes, 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 yes. We haven't written the code for this yet. So now we have fill all weapon data and equipment data are the two we're writing now. So weapon data, we are generating affixes and also all this other stuff. So exactly the same as tools for now. But we use prompt weapon data instead. So that'll fill out all our weapon specific stuff and also general attributes for the item. Wait for them both to be done and then call that callback again. And then for equipment, I guess we're doing the same there as well. Because that also needs affixes, but also all this equipment stuff. We have stat requirements now, so let's, as I said, this is just basically going to be the same function five times. Um, prompt equipment data, but we can't really generalize it because 
uh, we're going to add more coroutine steps to some of them and not others. We don't necessarily want to just like pass the prompt through to a single one or a list of prompts or something. So this is fine for now. Um, lastly, let's do consumables, which actually is a good example of we don't need a separate uh, type specific coroutine for it yet since it doesn't have anything other than the effects and affixes. So we are just saying fill out consumable data, we do the affixes generation and then wait for it to be done and then call the same callback. So that is four of the five material we are not doing anything so let's just do a placeholder for it. Uh, let's say fill all material data. So that is literally just going to, well, you know what, we could, let's generate attributes on materials too, why not? All right, so we have those nice helper functions. Now all we have to do is start them as coroutines up here with our item and the original callback to call when that item is done generating. So all these turn into nice uh, entry point for everything, all the logic, fill all the equipment data and fill all consumable data, cool, cool, cool. And so wait for item details to be complete. We've basically completely replaced now because it was just waiting until the item had an image and the item's effects array was not null. So it could be empty or could have effects. Um, so I think we can do away with this. It's just called here now. So let's go ahead and... We're either about to break a lot of stuff or it's going to just work. <laughs> all right, so that's all cleaned up now. So we kick off the image coroutine for everything, which I guess we could and maybe should move into each of these as well. because it's possible if this takes like five minutes to run, which it doesn't, but we are not waiting for this to be done and before we say the item is done. We're only waiting for like the data to be done. So it probably makes sense to also wait for that. So let's go ahead and move that into all of those too. So here, coroutine image generation is that and these are returning their coroutine that's just starting one okay that's cool so we'll take that we'll also wait for that to be done and we'll do that for everything so every item type needs an image and this is a little bit nicer because it's potentially possible for us to like generate an item and say it's done and like add it to the player's inventory or something before it has an image versus now it's all kind of in one process and we can wait for everything to be done. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cool. So now all of these places that we call fill out complete item details, which are all of the ways that we can craft new items in the game, alchemy, workstations, or harvesting, they all come through here. They all generate the basic info of item name, item type, and then they take that and fill out the rest of stuff through a bunch of different AI coroutines. 
Cool. So now is the point where I would love to test this, but <laughs> I'm still so suspicious that my stream has not crashed in the last 23 minutes. We have not been in play mode. It sure feels like if I were to go into play mode, it would probably crash. So do I do it? Do I keep streaming? I feel like if it crashes again, I'm gonna I'm gonna he I'm gonna head out. I'm gonna just work offline. But I think this is to the point where maybe we'll maybe it'll just work. Let's let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna enter play mode. Stream seems fine. I'm not gonna attach Visual Studio to it yet because it could also be related to that, like doing something weird with the drivers on my computer or something. But if my stream goes out, I want to say thanks to everyone who's been here. I can't stream game dev and also not be able to play the game. So we're going to do what we can. But luckily now we have uh, theoretically done every different flow of how to create items. So we don't necessarily need to go over to the anvil specifically and craft a tool specifically. We should be able to say like aluminum pickaxe, make an item from that. And it looks like my stream is still up. Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, we'll see if this actually completes the request since that's taking a really long time. We got an error, oh no. Oh, okay, that's just unity error. It is taking a really long time though. Okay. Interesting. So we got a tool. Right, we do need to actually attach Visual Studio in order to inspect that the properties were set correctly. But let's go ahead and just craft a few things. Let's make sure that, I mean, stream doesn't end, but let's try and get one of each item type. So we've got material and material. Let's get a new material, which should only generate an image, I believe and maybe some attributes. Um, it's really odd that it's taking so long now. I wonder if they should all be being done in parallel, all these coroutines. And then we wait for all of them done. I wonder if there's one that's like taking a really long time. But, all right, we got another material. Cool, 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 cool. Maybe we can get a weapon with like crystal axe. Or let's do an ash axe. And then equipment. Ooh. Oh, right. Okay. So we did get um, probably a weapon. But, you know, we didn't set those references in the, uh, the service. So let's go set those. Seems like playing is fine. So that's great. Knock on wood. Um, we need to set item creation service these prompts so equipment has one weapons has one we need to i mean consumables and materials don't have one yet I mean, I guess we're not using them. So let's just go ahead and delete the consumable one. We can add those when we need them. So now everything is set. Let's just, uh, you know, attach to Unity and actually test it, I guess. So hopefully the internet doesn't go out when I do this. We shall see. I also feel like there's some weirdities, like it takes so long to attach to Unity right now. Like normally it's pretty instant. And earlier it was like 30 seconds or so. So there's definitely some weird Unity stuff going on. Um, all right, so we are attached. Things are compiled. No errors. Got some warnings, which is fine. Let's jump on in. 
play mode attached to Visual Studio is where we kept having our internet be absolutely demolished earlier. So I've got my fingers crossed. All right, so if we craft Ash Axe, surely this will give us a weapon, which I'm realizing we don't have. Okay, we do have breakpoints here. So we are here. We've gone through and started this coroutine. We're now going to just take a look at the item data. So it doesn't have, uh, it is a weapon, so it's going to get uh, damage? Did I not add damage? I did not. Okay. Well, let's hold on on that. <laughs> Obviously, that's not going to work. Uh, over here, item. We don't even have anything for weapons. We need damage. What were the other ones? Attack speed. and damage type which is a string for now but we'll do the whole enum serialization thing later and i feel like weapons should probably also have those stat requirements we did on equipment but you know we'll we'll see how that works because it's a little bit weirder to like not be able to drag a weapon on your toolbar when you don't have the stats versus equipping it um, all right, so we now have where that item data will be stored on the actual item. Let's go back and try that again. We'll attach to Unity as well. And I guess wait another 10 million years for uh, whatever it's doing to do. All right, so let's try this again. Ash and an axe gets us an ashen axe, which is usually a weapon. So we've got an ashen axe. Let's go ahead and pin that. Oh, it already has the data, great. So it did get a physical damage type. It has damage one, attack speed one, cool. So now if we play through, we've, it's a little odd that it's already got the data, but, oh, interesting. This is different data now. So the serialized data, so the item we originally had already had attack speed and damage on it. Interesting. Okay, so we, I mean, that's fine, but we definitely have a logic bug somewhere. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and move our breakpoint up to here. Confused. Internet definitely died as soon as I made that second item and we failed two reconnects to OBS and then I unpo or unplayed, I left the game, and internet immediately came back. So there's ghosts in this code. Well, I mean, might as well just try again, I guess. We're back. <laughs> um... We'll probably disconnect again. We are attached. We're gonna make some items. I mean, it's the, the request never even finishes because the internet just immediately drops.
So Yeah, let me just say guys, <laughs> thanks for being here. I think if the stream dies again, I'm going to go ahead and uh, call it because uh I'd rather be writing the code right now than debugging my internet. Um but I appreciate all you guys here. I'll see you on Discord for sure. Um, let me just link that real fast. And uh, anybody not here, feel free to pop in there. I'm going to craft some items here. I'm sure it's going to kill my internet. I don't know what about crafting is killing it. But if we take this axe and this ash and we craft something, as soon as we get that item, we're going to hit this breakpoint. And I'm pretty sure the internet is going to die either now or in the next item. Uh, let's see what we got. So we got our smoldering axe already, which has, oh, it just has default values. Well, physical is not a default value. Interesting. So actually, we can take a look. We'll go back and look at the prompt output. It's in our console. I feel like our initial prompt that's generating like the item name and description and stuff is also <laughs> is also generating some of these other affixes now. Probably because we're serializing those fields and then the LLM is seeing that they are fields and is trying to populate them in. Um, my computer is like a jet engine right now. So yeah, I'm sure it's just resource ho like hogging or something. But um, so we, we got our smoldering ax that has some initial data. Let's continue until we get this new serialized data, which has specific um, like values for attack speed, damage, damage type, etc. because it is a weapon. So we've got these. Let's step through so it gets set and let's see the new values. It's all the same, but I think that's fine. Could be a coincidence. So let's continue. I'll update all these tooltips to show all this so we don't actually need to inspect it in Visual Studio, but I just wanted to get it working. So let's go ahead and Let's try a pickaxe and an axe. Let's see what we get there. We'll see if the stream dies again. So now we got a mining axe, which, okay, doesn't, I mean, it does seem like these seem default here, but this is a tool. So let's pass through. We get a serialized thing back that should have Related skill is set. Yeah, it is actually just, uh, we need to set some of those fields on the item non-serialized because it's passing through the whole item block from the get-go, it seems like, but that's fine. As long as we're setting all these things properly, it's still good. All right, so that seems like it works. Cool. Um, let's do equipment. So that should have like stat requirements on it. So we got speedsters, greaves. The first one has no stat requirements, no slot. So let's go ahead and play through until we get our serialized stuff back. Let's go over it. And I meant to do a step over and not step out. Oh, we erred. Okay. All right, so we'll need to... Oh, I bet the tuple doesn't serialize the way I think it does. All right, so let's go look at some bugs. Hmm.
So cannot deserialize a JSON array into a type tuple because the type requires the JSON object. Oh, okay. So we can just use the JSON object. It's whatever. Or change the deserialized type to an array or a type that implements a collection interface. Sure. I mean, we can do that too, I guess. It's complaining we have this and we're trying to serialize that into it. So we just don't have a converter in Unity or C Sharp or whatever from this into this. So we can just say, you know what, let's system.serializable public class stat requirement public string stat name hmm this isn't necessarily what we want because that's going to just be the object but can we implicit cast from Strength 10. Can we implement that from a tuple? But I think we actually need an array. So let's say implicit cast from array of size 2. Will it be smart enough to do that? I don't think so. Well. So that allows us to say now we have a, oh, also, yeah. <laughs> the problem was that I have an array of stat requirements here and there's only one stat requirement here. So we actually want list of stat requirement, but we also would have wanted list tuple string in, but this is a little nicer, I suppose. Let's see if that serializes though. Okay, so let's let's give that a shot. We can cause that by crafting any equipment. So let's do that. Sun really getting me. All right, let's go craft this equipment. Okay, so if we take our boots 